What's up everybody, this is Brenton Brown from Forza Tuning and Performance. And what I have behind me are two different Jeep Trackhawks, okay? On the right is a bone stock one. We haven't modified it at all yet. On the left, this is the Demon Hawk. So this is the Stage 4R Trackhawk with the Demon Blower on it. So what we're gonna do is, first of all, we're doing this testing for a couple different reasons. Number one, we wanna show the differences between the actual G-forces when you're launching from a dead stop on a stock Trackhawk then we're gonna do a standard stage 4R track hawk, and then we're gonna do the Demon Hawk, and we're gonna show you the differences. So I'm gonna think I'm gonna record G-forces. Uh, I'm gonna try to pull up zero to 60 times on each one. Now, the Demon Hawk is a lot of wheel spin, you know, so it spins all four wheels until about 60 mile an hour. We're gonna do a total remake on this, so it's gonna be Demon Hawk 2.0, and all that stuff will be addressed. So we're gonna be releasing some videos showing you all the stuff we're gonna be doing to it, so that'll come in a little bit later. I'm also gonna test intake air temperatures. Um, I've, I've addressed heat soak a little bit in the past between the Hellcat, uh, the Red Eye or Demon, and the Trackhawk. So the Trackhawk suffers the most from heat soak. And it's just because of the style of the heat exchanger in the front versus the Demon or the Red Eye. So what we've done is we've actually um, developed some upgraded heat exchangers for the Trackhawk the Red Eye Demon, and the Hellcat. And we've also done the supercharger bricks inside the supercharger. We have another Trackhawk, it hasn't been tuned yet. It's a standard stage 4R, and we have already upgraded the heat exchanger in the front. I'm gonna take a stock Trackhawk, and during this, I'm gonna be recording intake air temperatures. I'm gonna start off by recording the ambient air temperature and the humidity, and we're gonna do three consecutive runs from like zero to 100. And we're gonna record the starting IATs, what they end at, and then on the second run, what it's able to pull it back down to. And we're gonna see the comparison between a stock Trackhawk, the Demon Hawk, and then a standard Stage 4R Trackhawk. So then we're gonna do the one that we've already got the upgraded heat exchanger in, and we're gonna compare that data and see how much does this new heat exchanger um, how effective is it? What is the net gain or yield that it produces? Once we get, have that data, we're gonna do one more test and it's gonna be with the upgraded heat exchanger bricks that are in the supercharger itself. We're gonna start off with the stock one, so let's get back on the back road and get to testing. I'm gonna do three runs um, because I want to get data on um, heat soak between runs as well. You know, So what is the, what is the starting temperature? what is the temperature at you know 100 miles an hour or whatever from a dead stop and then what does it pull back down to um, in between the runs so and then same thing starting temperature and ending temperature on run two and run three we'll consecutively see those probably get hotter um, what i'm also going to do is on the first run i'm going to try to see if i can i want to test zero to 60 foot and G-forces. So the, the vehicle intake air temperature reads 138 on the screen and it's 141.8 on my scanner. I'm just gonna go off my scanner to make this easier. So right now driving, our uh, intake air temperatures are 129.2 and it's a bone stock track hawk and it's a hot day I and mean, we're in Florida. So it's probably gonna be the lowest, you now we're at 131. So it's probably safe to say that we are not gonna see any intake air temperatures ever um, on a stock track hawk on a day like today, anything under 130. You know, that's gonna be our lowest baseline because we were above that just sitting there idling. Okay, so I've got intake air temperatures right now at 147 degrees. I've got all this stuff recording, so I'm just gonna come off like, I'm gonna come off the foot brake at like 2,000 RPM. Okay, so, um, I'm just gonna use all the test as foot brake at 2,000 RPM. I'm not gonna do the launch mode. So, stock track hawk, we went from a zero to 60 foot time. It said like 4.1, I think it was the last one. I don't know if I reset it. And that was just stomping on the gas pedal. So, so yeah, 4.1. So, this is the number I'm gonna record. Um, we're gonna say 3.7. So, it did go down four tenths of a second. And you could definitely tell a difference. So 
at this point, um, it's definitely going to be as hot as it's going to get, especially with the temperature out here today. So I've got all my information. I've got, I'm going to pull when we get back. I'm going to stop this log and then get some more detailed information. Um, so we've got basically stock track hawk coming off the foot brake at 2,000 RPM, a 3.70 to 60 foot time, and a 1.27 uh, peak G-force. Intake air temperatures that are coming in through the air filter are 133, so they're higher than a stock track hawk with the stock air box, which is expected. Um, the air charge temperature, so remember before we were around 130, um, 140, um, we're 123 degrees in a Demon Hawk. So during normal driving conditions, the same heat exchangers, the Demon Hawk is much better as far as intake air temperatures than a bone stock track hawk. And that's due to the tuning aspect of it, um, specifically the duty cycle on the pump controlling the coolant to the supercharger. And we're probably gonna see this drastically change once we start actually doing pulls. Obviously, the Demon Hawk has the ability to get past 90 miles an hour drastically faster <laughs> than a stock one. So I'm just going to stop. That way, the pulls are the same, um, zero to 90. You know, because if we pull this, you know, if we pull at the same distance. Obviously, um, the Demon Hawk is going to be going at a excessively high rate of speed. <laughs> so that last one said zero to 60 in 3.3 seconds. Okay, so um, the stock track hawk was 3.7 seconds. Peak G-force um, uh, was 1.39. So that's 1.27 on the stock one versus 1.39. Now, if this truck would hook up, that being drastically higher. Last time, so zero to 60, it says 3.3, but the one before that, okay, I could tell it had more wheel spin and it said 2.2. I'm gonna pull them up back up when we get to the shop. So that's kind of what I was talking about is that there's, it's hard to really tell. Um, I can't tell exactly what's happening, but I just know that the zero to 60 time is inaccurate. Um, the truck feels the exact same pretty much between every run. Um, I've got all it recorded. So the peak G forces, yeah, 1.39. So the first run was 1.37 and then it went to 1.39. So I guess it couldn't break that on any of the other consecutive runs. So looks like stock, uh, stock track hawk 1.27 and demon hawk 1.39 spinning. So we'll, when we do demon hawk 2.0 build, we'll see what that goes up to. Right now our, our air charge temperature is about 140, 143 degrees. So that's what the stock track hawk is. So that's after three or four consecutive pulls here. Now we're gonna take this out. This is a stage four R track hawk and it has the upgraded heat exchanger in the front. So we're gonna see what this does. So the testing that we did was yesterday was 88 degrees and 65% humidity. So today is 89 and 66% humidity. So the weather is basically gonna be static, you know, between the two days. So we'll take it out there and let's see what it does. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like... Right now, intake air temperature coming in the air filter is 108 and the air charge temperature is 107 so this is ridiculous so far like literally like just the air is cooler after it passes through the supercharger so sitting here intake air temperature since the air filter is just sitting in there um, intake air temperature is climbing so 126 127 135 so this is just the result of hot air in the engine bay so it's sucking it in. Air charge temperature has not even budged off 109. Let's go ahead and do, do number one here. We're 
going to do two to three more consecutive pulls. The first car we did three, uh, the Demon Hawk we did four. The last one was just for the hell of it because the UPS guy wanted to see it. <laughs> and so this one we'll do three or four um depending on what we get and then we'll go back to the shop and kind of do a recap and see where we're at Okay, cool. So we just got done testing the front heat exchanger. Um, the results are super positive. Um, what I want to do before I share all the data with you is we're going to pull the supercharger off, change out the supercharger bricks to the updated design that we have. We're going to put them back in and do some final testing and see what the yield is off that. And then we'll collect all the data and we'll share it all with you. So we've tested the stock Trackhawk. We tested the Demon Hawk. We tested a regular stage 4R Trackhawk, which is this one with the upgraded heat exchanger. And now we've installed the supercharger intercoolers and we're gonna do the final test with the intercoolers and heat exchanger to see what the yield is after everything's on. Got all the testing done. So what I want to share with you are the results of the testing. I did this over the course of two or three different days, um, but the temperature varied only between two degrees every day um, and humidity within 5%. So what I did is basically three to four pulls, okay, um, in a row, basically maybe a minute or so cool down between, um, left the car running the entire time, and I recorded intake air temperatures, air charge temperatures, so on and so forth. But what I'm gonna share with you are air charge temperatures, okay? So that is actually the air going into the engine. So not coming in the air filter, going in, into the engine. So on the testing, what we did is we did not use the launching control. We came off the foot brake at 2000 RPMs, okay? So we started from a dead stop and on a stock Jeep Trackhawk, we went from zero to 87 miles per hour. Okay, so I'm gonna give you starting and ending air charge temperatures. So on a stock Jeep Trackhawk, we started at 140 degrees, and on the first run, we ended at 151. So we gained 11 degrees during the pull. Uh, run number two, we went from 138 to 153. Uh, so we gained 15 degrees. On the third consecutive pull, we went from 145 to 158. So we added 15 degrees. So. It, it takes between 45 and 60 seconds of driving for the temperature to come back down to where it started, okay? So, the next one I'm gonna share with you is the Demon Hawk. So, this thing gets incredibly hot. So, on the first pull, we actually started um, with the temperature much lower, and that's because of the duty cycle on the coolant pump in the tuning. So, we started at 126 degrees, and at 87 mile an hour, we got up to 171 degrees. So we added 45 degrees as opposed to the 11 degrees on the stock one. Run number two started 133 degrees and went from 177. Um, so it's, it gained about the same amount of temperature. Uh, run number three, we went from 136 to 179 degrees. So again, it's getting hotter, but we're starting hotter. But so the, the, basically we're adding 45 degrees during the course of this run. Um, now, we did a little bit more on the Demon Hawk just to show you some comparisons. So on the last pull, at 87 miles an hour, we were at 179 degrees. At 94 miles an hour, it went up to 185. At 100 miles an hour, it went up to 187 degrees. Now on the last pull, we went faster. So we were at 185 degrees at 87 miles an hour, 191 degrees at 94 miles an hour, 192 at 100 miles an hour and 194 degrees air charge temperature at 110 miles per hour. Okay, so that is crazy hot. So the next one we tested, okay, is a stage four Trackhawk with just the upgraded heat exchanger. So run number one on the stage four Trackhawk with the upgraded heat exchanger. The first run, it probably didn't run as long, so we started at 115 degrees, a little bit lower. Um, and we ended at 151 at 87 miles an hour. So run number two, we started at 122 degrees and we ended at 156 degrees at 87 miles an hour. 
Run number three, 126 to 160 degrees at 87 miles an hour. So between all those runs, we picked up between 34 and 36 degrees. So the Demon Hawk picked up between 43 to 45 degrees. With the heat exchanger, now we're picking up 34 or 36 degrees, but it continually starts at a lower temperature. Okay, so what I wanna do is right now, I wanna show you just a comparison between the three different platforms at on the third run at 87 miles an hour. So the stock track hawk ended at 158 degrees. The Demon Hawk ended at 179 degrees. So the stage four R track hawk with the just the upgraded heat exchanger ended at 160 degrees. Okay, so now you can see we are only two degrees hotter than the stock track hawk. Okay, so that's pretty good. And this is just with the heat exchanger in the front. The last test is with the upgraded heat exchanger and the upgraded intercoolers inside the supercharger. This one is the most impressive. Okay, so basically between this run, I'm gonna kind of just speed this up. First run, 144 to 165, 140 to 158, and 138 to 156. So the most important part of this is now we're yielding about 18 to 20 degree gain over the course of the runs. So a stock track hawk gains between 11 and 15, um, Demon Hawk was between 43 and 45 degrees, heat exchanger only adding 34 to 36 degrees, and with the intercoolers we're adding 18 to 21 degrees. The stock track hawk on the third pull from 0 to 87 miles an hour, the ending air charge temperature was 158 degrees. Okay, the stage four hour track hawk with all the cooling mods from zero to 87 miles per hour on the third pull, we ended at 156 degrees. So we are actually two degrees cooler on a thousand horsepower track hawk than we, when we are on a bone stock track hawk. The track hawk with all the cooling mods at 110 mile an hour ended at 165 degrees. So we're talking 30 degrees less than the Demon Hawk. But these upgrades are gonna be something that you're gonna see us release uh, very, very shortly. They're in production. So I'm very happy with the results. I think the Trackhawk benefits from this greatly. It's the Hellcat platform that suffers the most from heat soak. So we're also gonna be releasing these for the regular Hellcat and the Red Eye and Demon. So again, this wraps it up for the video. Hopefully this was informative. Thanks again, see you on the next video.